page 1,662. Our scripture passage this morning is out of John, John chapter 25, verses, or John chapter 8, verses 25 through 32. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy. And what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They do not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I, al for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. To the Jews that had believed in him, Jesus said this, You, if you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you you free. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, this morning we're going to get back into the belt of truth. Been working through our armor. We're going to continue with the belt of truth this morning. So, a little bit of a recap. Back then, the belt was known for uh, their identity, okay? It was like we referred to it as our letterman jackets or even our military dress. If you look at somebody's letterman jacket, you can tell a whole lot about them, can't you? If you look at someone's military dress, you can tell a whole lot about them. Well, the same was with the belts that the, the Romans wore back then. It was a lot about their identity. It was about who they were. Interestingly enough, when Paul is talking about the armor of God, the belt is the first thing that he talks about. The first thing. And one of the things about that is that back then, when boys would go into the military, they would go in and they would get their cloak. And that was the only piece that they had for quite some time. You see, they had to earn certain things. And the first piece of what they earned was... Can you guess? Their belt. Their belt. They were known as then a, a belted man or a belted soldier. That same thought carried on for years upon years upon years, all the way into where we had the Crusades and the Knights and, and all of England. The first thing that they ever got was their belt. Now, we talked a little bit about this two weeks ago. On their belts, what would they carry? They would carry their weapons, they would carry their equipment, and they would carry their provisions or needed food that they would have. So do you see why the belt is so important? Foundational. That's why Paul comes out of the gates with it. The belt of truth. Truth is important, isn't it? It's a basis for almost everything we do in life. It's a basis for our relationships. Right? Right? Our, our marriages? Oh, I do. Now, how would you respond if they said, I might? <laughs> well, okay, let me back the truck up. We need to rethink this for a second here because, you know, I don't know if you're exactly sure or you may not be truthful, right? Friendships, the same way. Can I trust you? Where does trust come out of? Trust comes out of truth. If someone has been honest right then you know what I'm going to give you a little piece of my trust the more honest you are the more truthful you are with me the more I'm going to trust you you see the connections there do you see why it's so important that right out of the gates foundationally where we are in battle is from a point of truth I am the way the truth and the life that's why we 
Even, we, even our, our comments can be, or our phrases that we use, man, I'm hanging a whole lot on this truth. Right? The same principle as what these belts were designed for. To hang things on. Because it's sure, it's solid. And the same thing is we're talking, you know, Paul's talking about armor. We've been through the helmet of salvation. We've talked about the, the, the shield of faith. I even walked around here with arrows stuck under my arms. We've talked about these things because we're in war, we're in battle. You need a foundation in this fight. Right? We need a foundation in this fight. And Paul is telling us, Paul, I'll put it this way, Paul is repeating what Jesus said back in John. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when Paul talks about putting on the belt of truth, that word truth is going to click at that point in time with all of those Christians that have come before because they knew who the truth was. It's Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's why the first thing that you put on is to understand is, is truth. You have to be engaged in that. You have to be wearing that. And again, I go back to our relationships. If we don't have trust, if we don't have truth in our relationships, how much are you going to depend on that relationship? You're not. It can be marriage, it can be your coworkers, it can be family members. We have all experienced the good, and we have all experienced the bad, haven't we? We could probably, and, and this is very unfortunate, but we could probably go around the room and spend more time talking about how trust has been broken in our lives than how it has been built up. True? Yes. And church, it's unfortunate. It, is, it's, it really is. At the same time, what that does is it sheds a little bit of light on understanding what has been happening in our lives for so long that clearly the pendulum needs to shift. Right? Because if my life is constantly full of, of brokenness and, 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 and sadness and frustration... I don't know one person that's going to walk up to me and go, Hey, uh, Ian, can I be a Christian? Because that looks like good stuff. And I want that. But if we find ourselves trustworthy, if we find ourselves truthful, though sometimes that truth may hurt at first, it is a foundation. Is it not? It is. And don't take my word for it. Jesus said it first. He said it. Paul said it. Truth. Truth is when we go into battle that we can hang our weapons on. That's why we have the sword of the Spirit. That's what this thing is right here. It's a piece that holds a sword that connects to the belt. We have our equipment, all of our gifts and our talents, the gems that God has given us. And we have our source, our food, our provision in that, that hangs on truth. Here's your sermon in a sentence. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Freedom is what we all, at points, long for. We may have found ourselves in the craziest little prison cells. Sometimes we put ourselves in, don't we? Sometimes we allow circumstances around us to push us into those cells. But the truth will set you free. It can be one of those things to where at points... Okay. 
You guys got to be honest. It's you too. Who's lied? Okay, I'll close my eyes if that helps you. Okay. That lack of truth, no matter what it was, I don't care if you stole a candy bar when you were six, or where you lied to your parents and said, no, I didn't do that, or whatever it was, I don't care when, but do you remember the prison cell that you went into because of that untruth? Emotionally, mentally, you have stepped into a prison cell. The key to... To getting out of that prison cell is what? Admitting the truth. Now, I don't know what kind of consequences you may have had on the other side of that lie. But there is a relief and a release that happens in your heart when the truth comes out. Right? The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. So here we are in a battle. Paul talks about put on the armor of God. That you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles, the fury, the, the darts of the enemy. Freedom is there. That's what we're fighting for. Is for our freedom. So that we're not captured by the enemy but that we are free to be and do what God has made us to, free, to be and do. He, what God has designed for us to, to move forward or to advance in a particular situation. And truth is at the heart of it. Truth. Truth will set you free. Truth is who Jesus is. According to John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So how do I know this truth? How do I understand that I have this belt wrapped around my waist? That is relationship. That is when Jesus has looked at you and said, I do. And at points, he might be waiting for your response. If you picture yourself standing at the altar with him, and he looks at you and says, I do, absolutely. What's your answer? Because your answer is what you have accepted and what you will allow to come into your life and wrap about your waist. Because what is the belt? First, identity. Do you see that connection? When you accept Christ as your Savior and you said, yes, I do, I trust you, you, you are truth. I'm not going to, to, to step away from that. I'm not going to be drawn away from that truth. I'm going to stay there because I've committed to this relationship. And he wraps this belt of truth around you for your identity because that's who you are. That's truth. He is truth. He's the one with you in battle. He's the one teaching you how to use each one of these weapons. How that you're defended from those things. The truth, Jesus, will set you free. From any hurt, from any pain, from any anxiety, from any question... The truth will set you free. What do you need freed from? That's a tough question, isn't it? But we have things that we are imprisoned by. What do you need freed from? Because the answer is truth. There is freedom in truth. Truth is Christ. He knows all things. He sees all things. And he will answer. The truth will set you free. That's why Paul starts there. Is to wrap yourself in truth. With all that is 
is, is happening today. From, from the COVID sickness to the elections to what's happening after the elections to what's going to happen with COVID to what, what, what we can ask questions all day long. What's going to happen within my family? You know what? I'm, Ian, I'm not even concerned about COVID. I could care less about the elections right now. I've got this happening in my life, my situation. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, this situation and me are the only things in this whole world right now. Truth. The one that answers all the big questions cares enough about you. He cares enough about what's going on in your life. And will answer those questions for you. Wrap yourself in truth. To know him, two things. Spend time with him and read about him. Spend time with him and read about him. I've used this example before, and and it applies here. Most of you know that I journal. Got books about my life. The only ones I hope ever read them are my kids. I don't want anybody else. I don't want anybody else to read them. <laughs> but it's one of those things that we can look at this at God's journal. But see, I'm here, and so I want my kids to spend time with me. There will come a day that they can read about it. But right now I want them to spend time with it. Does that make sense? So, so our ways of getting to know God in, in years upon years upon years, even to myself, it has been preached. Read your Bible. True. I'm going to change it up a little bit though. Spend time with Him. Sit and listen. And if you're like, I don't even know what His voice sounds like, just sit there. Just sit and listen. And then read. And read about him. That's how you get to know the truth. If my kids and people around me want to get to know me, then come talk to me. Ask me questions. Right? That makes the most sense, doesn't it? God's no different. Sit with him. Ask him questions. Wait for answers. Listen for answers. Write down what you think he might be saying and go talk to somebody that does hear the Lord's voice that you know and that you trust. Get to know him because he is truth. And that's what Paul tells us to wrap ourselves in. Wrap ourselves in the truth of who he is. Because all of the tools that you'll get, all of the weapons that you'll get, all of the provisions that are there for you can be hooked on that truth because that truth is true and you can trust it. You can trust it. No matter what the enemy may throw in your head to make you guess or second guess, you can trust it because it's true. So the belt of truth, church, is Christ. It's Jesus. Wrap yourselves in it now. Don't wait. Do it now. Because our coming days, we're going to need it. We're going to need it. And we all know it. Truth allows us to stay focused. Truth allows us to not be distracted. Because truth doesn't change. It doesn't change. We have a great couple weeks coming up ahead. November is going to prove to be interesting. We all know it. Truth. Stay focused. Don't get distracted. Head down. Head strong. Let's keep moving forward. In what God's called us to do. A lot of things are happening, which we know, and that's a, a very huge, wide, broad paint stroke in what I just said. But people's eyes are being opened to what God has for them. They are. I just want to encourage you to grab it. Grab it, run with it. Understand that God is for you. He's not against you. But he has great things ahead. I didn't say pretty. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, not all unicorns and rainbows. But great things are ahead. And sometimes, a lot of times, great things come out of difficulties. So, let's be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on your armor. Just like you pick up your cell phone in the morning, pick up your armor. Don't be caught without it. You're going to need it. All of us do. Father, Lord God, I thank you for this time that you've given us and how you've blessed us. Father, I pray that the things that you've shared this morning penetrate our soul. That we understand the truth of who you are. And that we need you. We don't need a, a, a clever plan. We don't need human wisdom. But we need you. We need you to give us insights and strength. We need you to be able to carry our burdens. And you've already promised that for us. God, thank you for loving us. In ways that we don't understand yet. But that you want to share with us. Father, thank you for blessing us and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.